Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, if you're new here, I'm Mihaela. I am 20 years old and I have a beautiful daughter named Aurora and a wonderful husband, Calvin. I just want to welcome you to my channel and if you are not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and go ahead and give this a big thumbs up because this is going to be my labor and delivery story. I hope I'm not all over the place, but I didn't write anything down. So, um, also my daughter is swinging. If you hear like a little clicking noise, that's her little swing. And if you hear her, she's, she's sleeping right now. So if you hear her, she's going to wake up soon. But, um, so I was going to make a video of like my labor and delivery and everything like in the making. Well, not in the making, but you know what I meant? Like all through me giving birth and everything but it was so tragic that I wasn't able to videotape it and it happened all so fast and yeah so let's get right into it um so the first thing is is November 14th was my due date and I had a doctor's appointment that day and um they were gonna naturally induce me which they were gonna uh sweep my membranes which if you don't know what that is I'm not gonna sit here and explain it because it's kind of awkward but if you want to look it up go ahead and look it up but um they swept my membranes it was kind of a 50 50 chance for it working and so i had my doctor's appointment at like 9 a.m that day so i was like the end of that day i was like okay this is probably not gonna work so i'm probably and they also um sent me for an induction for the next week on either wednesday or thursday i can't remember but so um I was at the end of the 14th and I was like, okay, it probably didn't work. I'm probably just going to have to wait till my induction. And so, um, the next day I was feeling kind of weird. I kept on having like small contractions. So I was like, maybe today is the day, but the whole day went by fast and nothing was going on. And I was like, okay, maybe I'm not going to get, give birth until my induction. So luckily my friend uh, was visiting me that week because I was supposed to have her a week before because they said I was like five days farther along but they're going to keep my, um, my due date the same. So um, the night of the 15th I was doing yoga positions because I saw that you can do um, yoga, these certain yoga positions to induce labors naturally. So I was doing them and I was doing my number one one or the number one position that um I've been told that will help um put you in labor like super fast so I was doing it I've been doing it all through my pregnancy to help with it and so finally I was like I'm just gonna do this yoga position and if anything happens then yay but if it doesn't then whatever so I'm doing this yoga position. My friend is sitting on my couch and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel something wet. And so I run to the bathroom and this is where it like gets crazy. Um, so I look down and there's blood everywhere. And I've always been told that there's like this thing called the bloody show, which it happens um, when your water breaks or something. So I was like, okay, okay. So it could be that. But then like I saw how much blood was coming out and I started freaking out. So I called the um, hospital and I was like, should I come in? Like, like I knew I should have came, I should come in, but I was like freaking out because I was like, I don't want to overreact, but this is a lot of blood. So I called them and I, was, and I said, I don't know if I should come in. What do you think? And they're like, well, if you're barely filling a pad, then you don't need to come in. And I was like, I'm feeling more than a pad, like it's everywhere. So she was like, okay, well, you should come in. And so I was like, Cheyenne, which is my best friend's name, I was like, call Calvin, call my mom. I was like, I think my water broke with this and we need to go to the hospital. And then for some reason, I decided not to grab anything. I didn't grab chargers, I didn't grab clothes, I didn't grab anything because I was just freaking out because I didn't want my baby to be in danger just because of all the blood that was going on. So we're driving and um, I was freaking out because my husband 
was at work still and he was on his way home but traffic in california if you do not live in california traffic is horrible when it's around five six o'clock and that's exactly what time it was when i went into labor and which sucked because when you're in labor and it's five o'clock it's like two hour traffic but uh, thank god that we went in opposite direction where it doesn't um it doesn't interfere with traffic so I was telling my husband I was like uh, hurry and get off work and and he works 20 minutes away which if you're in traffic that's like an hour and a half of sitting in traffic so we get to the hospital and I'm freaking out because all the way there I didn't feel the baby move I felt it move once and I was like freaking out because I didn't want her to be like dying inside me or whatever was going on and so I am um, we get to the hospital we pull it to the emergency room and I was like Cheyenne go inside real quick and tell them what's going on and then yeah and so she went in there and they she told them that I was 40 weeks pregnant and I have blood everywhere and yeah and they're like get this they're like well um, we're kind of busy right now, but we'll send a nurse out there in just a second. Here's a wheelchair. Like, I'm sitting in the car bleeding, and they're like, well, we're busy right now. Like, who says that? So, she comes out with a wheelchair, and I get in, and I'm, like, freaking out because there's still, like, blood coming out of me. And she's wheeling me up into the emergency, or we were going to go up to labor and delivery and not even go into the emergency room. But a nurse came out and was like, do you want to come through the emergency room first? And then we'll take you up to labor and delivery. And I was like, okay, yeah, I want to do that because I want to make sure everything's okay. And so they took me into one of the rooms in the emergency room and they noticed how much blood there was, that it was a huge deal. And there was, it went from like two doctors to like 10, 15 doctors in the room. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is happening? Like I was freaking out. So um, I was like, is my baby okay? Is my baby okay? Like, I don't care about me. I just want to make sure my baby's okay. And they're like, we're gonna look, we're gonna bring an ultrasound here. We're gonna make sure that the baby's okay. We're gonna look for the heartbeat and everything. And I was like, okay. So while they're bringing the ultrasound in, they're like sticking me in both my arms with IVs and they were taking my blood sugar, my blood pressure, which my blood pressure was sky high because I was freaking out. And so they were like telling me to calm down and I was like, I can't calm down until I hear a heartbeat. So they hurried and brought a thing in and they said, okay, here's the heartbeat. So I was relieved, but I was shaking so bad. I think it was just um, the adre adrenaline. So they took me up to labor and delivery and that's when the uh, contractions started and I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that contractions were this bad when you're in labor. So I was um, two centimeters when I went in there, when they checked me up at um, labor and delivery. And then um, three hours go by and all of a sudden my baby's heartbeat started going down to 60 and it's supposed to be in the 150s. So they hurried and had a doctor come in and um, they thought it was because she was moving around so much. Cause when we got up there, she started moving around a lot. So um, we positioned the little monitor on my stomach differently and her heart rate went up again. And then all of a sudden her heart rate went down again to 60. And then so they had the doctor come in and they're like, okay, we're gonna um, move you on your side and then back over and then on your side again and then back over to try to get her heart rate up again. So we did that and then her heart rate went back up and they're like, okay, usually by the third time we um, actually like take action with the heartbeat. So um, the third time she does it, it goes down to 60 again and they're like, okay, try to get on your hands and knees um, on the bed and we'll try to figure something else out. So they had to put like a little um, heart monitor thing um, up me on her head so they can monitor the um, her heart rate better 
And so they did that, and they're like, okay, one more time, if, she, if it goes down again, we're gonna have to do an emergency C-section. All while we're doing this, while they told me, okay, I'm backtracking again. Okay, so they told me um, when I first went up to labor and delivery that I'll have the baby in the first 25 hour, 24 hours. 25 hours. 24 hours. And um, so I told my husband, hey, go home, take a shower, get chargers, get some clothes, and then hurry and come to the hospital because they said I wasn't going to have the baby anytime soon. And apparently the bleeding wasn't um, very concerning to them. So... Um, so fast forwarding back to where I was, um, they put my, put me on my hands and knees and they're checking the baby's heart rate and then it went down again. So they're like, okay, we're going to have to, um, do an emergency C-section. So, um, I call, or I had my friend Cheyenne call my husband and tell him that I was going to have a, have to have a C-section for him to get their ASAP and he was... He was already on his way there, so that was good. So my husband finally got there. He got all in the um, the operating room attire, like the cap and the gown and everything. And um, he was like freaking out because he was gone for maybe an hour and to come back, and I and on my hands and knees, and I had this cap on, getting ready to go to the operating room, and so. Um, I'm scared. I'm crying. I was like, I don't want to have a C-section. I don't want to do it. So they're like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. But you have two options. We have to either put you to sleep or we need to hurry and do an epidural. So I was like, okay, well, um, I wanted, I wanted to wait till my husband got there because he wasn't there at the time when they told me that. I was like, I want to wait till my husband gets here for me to do the epidural because I heard that it hurt a lot. And they're like, we can't wait. Like, so he got there right at that time. So I, um, they took me to the operating room and they're like, okay, we're going to do the epidural. It was kind of a stronger, I forget what they called it, but it was like a stronger dose of the epidural and it happened instantly. They put it in me and I felt numb from here down. And, um, so I was laying there and I was like so scared because I didn't know what was going on and I was hoping that my baby was okay because they couldn't find the heartbeat right when we went in there because of her moving around and everything. So we went in there and I was sitting on the side of the bed and I remember holding on to the nurse that was in front of me while they were doing the epidural and I was like, I'm so sorry because there's like blood just coming out everywhere on the floor. and. I kept on saying, sorry, sorry, I, I'm probably getting it on your scrubs. I'm probably getting it all over your shoes. I'm so sorry. She was like, no, it's okay. Like, the nurses there really helped me out a lot. And so, um, I, I just kept on apologizing. I remember apologizing. And then they laid me down, and I couldn't feel anything. And they, my they brought my husband in after the epidural. And... I remember the doctor saying, okay, everyone needs to be where they're supposed to be because we need to get this baby out right now. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, is something like, like I knew that her heart rate was going down, but I didn't know if like something serious was happening. So, um, it was about, I don't even want to say it was like five minutes, but, um, they took the baby out and she started crying and I was so happy. I was like crying and everything. And this all happened within like four hours. Like it was like that. And I didn't even think to try to videotape it or anything because it was so crazy. And so, um, my husband went over there and he was, he cut the bill cord. He did all that. And he was over there with her. She, she cried for maybe a couple seconds and then she was content. She's a good baby. She doesn't cry or anything. So, um, he was over there for like 10 minutes with her and I was like over there crying because like I hear my baby, but I can't see her cause they're over there cleaning her up and everything. And I'm like, I carry her for nine months and I can't see my baby. And I was just crying. But then like he finally brought her over and so I can see her and she was so beautiful. And, um, yeah, and she, 
Um, the doctor told me that I had a um, abruption with my placenta and that's why I was bleeding so much and that's why her heart rate went down. So after all that, if you have not had a C-section, it is horrible the next like couple weeks. Like um, I remember I had to be in the um, labor and delivery room on my bed for at least 48 hours because I could not walk. It's not because um, the epidural, it wore off pretty fast, but um, it was because like when you're cut right there on your stomach, it's so hard to like sit up and move around and everything. So I was on the bed for 48 hours and then while I was in the room, Aurora, which is my daughter's name, um, she had to be in the NICU for a couple of days because of, um, she had a blow, low blood sugar because of the medicine that they gave me before because they didn't know I was gonna have a C-section. So they gave me medicine and that's why her blood sugar was so low. And um, so she was in the NICU for a couple of days. And then um, after the 48 hours, I was able to get up and take a shower finally. And it was so horrible. I had to wear like, <sighs> I had to wear these big giant pads because like when you after you give birth you have you bleed so much and so even if you have a c-section you bleed a lot and so my husband helped me out so much and my best friend helped me out so much and the nurses helped me out so much and then we have to go home I think after the third day because um, Aurora's blood sugar um, was um, where it needed to be so we finally got to have her in the room for I think the last night that we were there. And um, so yeah, so, so that was my um, labor and delivery vlog, or vlog, my labor and delivery story on my tragic labor and delivery. <laughs> but um, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and join my family. Um, I do plan for 2019 to, um, upload a lot more, so this is my introduction of, um, 2019 of my labor and delivery, but, um, if you like these story time videos, um, just comment and like that you like them. Alright, well, I will, um, see you next video. Thanks for watching. Bye!